John Crichton, an astronaut, got shot through a wormhole, and so on. But who is John Crichton? Commander John Crichton, a schmuck. Mule-headed, reckless, and probably brain-dead before I met him. All true. Nevertheless, John Crichton is the protagonist of Farscape, which means he is some sort of a hero. But what kind of hero is he? Farscape is original in so many ways, so is it also original in its treatment of its main hero? Let's explore. Depending on who you ask, there are in fiction five or six types of heroes. Basically, they boil down to the classic hero, epic hero, tragic hero, anti-hero, and everyman hero. Epic heroes are unrealistic characters of superhuman dimensions. They possess divine, magical, or technological abilities that make them separate from and superior to ordinary people. Hercules was son of a god. Superheroes of the comic book universes, by birth or by life-altering event, have superhuman abilities. Classical heroes are persons without any superhuman powers, but they have a special gift or quality that distinguishes them from ordinary people. Classical heroes are larger-than-life figures of surpassing virtue. Many classical heroes are the subject of prophecy, or are descendants of a classical hero who are tasked, willingly or not, with a heroic quest that only they can complete. The tragic hero has a fatal flaw that spells their doom from which they cannot escape. Oedipus is the archetype of the tragic hero, though this type has become more common in the postmodern age. The anti-hero is a deeply flawed character who is central to the plot, but is more like a villain than a typical hero, especially in lacking what most would consider a moral sense. Early science fiction had many epic and classical heroes, from John Carter of Mars to Flash Gordon to Luke Skywalker. But the anti-hero has become more popular as much science fiction has turned to dark and brooding themes. Finally, the everyman hero is an ordinary man or woman with no extraordinary capabilities who is thrown into extraordinary circumstances in which they are forced to rise to the occasion and act heroically. Bilbo and Frodo Baggins are good examples. To me, it is readily apparent which type of hero John Crichton is, because it is easy to see what type of heroes he is not. Crichton is not an epic hero. He is not a descendant of the gods or of nobility. He has no superhuman abilities in strength, agility, or intelligence. Nor does he possess any magical abilities. In fact, as a human among aliens, Crichton has inferior physical senses and abilities. He can barely keep pace. Crichton is also not an anti-hero because, although he is away from Earth against his will, he is never reluctant to do what he sees as morally right and help others. No matter what happens, Crichton never loses his strong idealism and sense of ethical responsibility toward other sentient beings. He never forgets that they are persons like himself, despite being different. Crichton is not a tragic hero because though he has flaws and does suffer, he is not doomed and does not lose everything. Farscape is not that kind of morality tale. Crichton does, in the end, succeed in winning his objective. He comes out on top. It is Crichton's eventual victory in his plan to stop the war that leads some to conclude that Crichton is a classical hero. There is definitely an argument for this if you consider Crichton's wormhole knowledge to be a special gift and his efforts to keep it from evil hands as his quest. Here is where, if you haven't watched Farscape yet, turn this off and go watch it, because there are about to be spoilers. In the first 15 episodes, Crichton is distinctive only in being the only human in this part of the galaxy. In the episode A Human Reaction, he has an encounter with a species we later come to know as the Ancients, who, we later learn, implanted knowledge of wormholes locked in his mind. That gift of latent knowledge is discovered by Scorpius. These equations are necessary for creating a world. I don't remember that. You're teaching me how to... No. You're going to have access to this data consciously. You won't remember this part of our encounter. We will not give you 
wormhole technology. Why not? If you're not smart enough to discover it on your own, you're not smart enough to handle it wisely. Crichton becomes hunted by Scorpius, who replaces Crace as the show's villain and the threat from which Crichton and his friends are fleeing. The wormhole knowledge is a gift that separates Crichton from others and seems to turn Crichton into a classical hero. But does the wormhole knowledge give him special powers? Does the knowledge turn into a quest for him? The knowledge turns him into a special target of both Scorpius and the Scarens, but he is little more than a pawn in their galacto-political struggle. The best he can do is try to keep from being captured, and in most of Farscape the original series, the companions on Moya are by and large running away trying to survive and little else. Crichton is running away from Kreis, Scorpius, Greza, and the Scarens, the whole series other than once when he resolves to enter the lion's den of Scorpius's research base in order to sabotage Scorpius's wormhole project, and second when he crashes into Scaren territory, first to rescue Eren, then to rescue Scorpius. Crichton's actions are heroic, but the hows and whys of his action show what kind of hero Crichton is. Many science fiction heroes are soldiers or warriors. For example, the Star Warses, the Star Treks, the Stargates, and Babylon 5. Crichton learns how to fight, but he is not military or a conquering hero. As he tells us, I'm a damn scientist. Nor is Crichton a lost prince, wizard, or savior. His arrival in this part of the galaxy is an accident, not the fulfillment of prophecy. He is not destined to fulfill a grand quest, or anything really. At first, Crichton just wants to get home, and it would seem at first that this is his classical hero's quest. But over time, he bonds with his companions on Moya, including a flirtation with a certain Aaron Sun, and he develops a fierce loyalty to them, repeatedly risking his life for them. Those are the actions of a hero, but Crichton isn't trying to save the world or universe, he is trying to save his friends. And while intelligent people can differ on this point, this is why I say Crichton is an everyman hero, not a classical hero. Crichton's heroism is not the classical larger-than-life savior of the world bit. He is no King Arthur, he is no Braveheart, he is no Captain Kirk. He is a schmuck. Sure, Crichton is almost the all-American boy. He is tall, handsome, clean-cut, down-home, and pure. And he is a regular guy who has an ordinary balance of strengths and weaknesses, who must learn how to survive by being adaptable, not by using any special abilities. Crichton is the son of a hero, an astronaut who walked on the moon. But this patrilineage only explains how Crichton has access to the space program to conduct his scientific experiments. He, in fact, though loving and admiring his father, feels that being the son of a hero is a burden. He can never be his father's kind of hero. But in the first episode of Farscape, the original series, before Crichton leaves Earth, his father tells him that but each man gets a chance to be his own kind of hero. And this is almost a thesis statement for the series and for the type of hero that Crichton is. Like so much else that happens in Farscape, Crichton has to improvise his heroism. His motivations are primarily to save himself and his friends. More like a classical hero, Crichton, beginning with the Look at the Princess trilogy, acts motivated to prevent bloodshed by keeping wormhole weaponry out of the hands of both peacekeepers and scarens. But toward the end of season four and the Peacekeeper Wars film, his motivations shift more to protecting Eren and her fetus. He stops the war, but only by taking extreme actions that result in the death of untold numbers. His complex motivations and actions in the Peacekeeper Wars I will discuss at length another time. But to the question of what kind of hero Crichton is, I wish to make two observations. One is that he is only able to build the wormhole weapon because the alien Crichton calls Einstein unlocks that knowledge for him. It is not an ability Crichton possesses, only carries against his will. The other is that in the Peacekeeper Wars, 
Crichton is so obsessed with the need to protect Aaron and their future child that Aaron has to intervene. This is ugly, and it is malignant, but it will protect you oh, and the baby. You see, you don't just protect me. We protect each other. In the final hour of Peacekeeper Wars, Crichton almost becomes a tragic hero, flawed and almost dying from his own hubris and actions. He does stop the war, and for that he is a hero. But as soon as he succeeds in shutting down the wormhole weapon, Einstein takes the wormhole knowledge back from him, and Crichton is returned to the normal human being that he was at the beginning of the series. That makes him no less a hero, but confirms that he is an everyman, not an epic or a classical hero. He does not win a kingdom. He does not fulfill a prophecy. He survives. And some of his friends survive, too. Crichton is a hero, yes, but an everyday hero. And that's the best kind.